Hey guys, today I thought I'd share a tutorial with you. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make a watercolor kind of painting just like this one. Um, it's super easy, you guys are gonna be so surprised how easy it is. We're basically just going to use a couple of things and um, you're gonna come out with a painting very similar to this. It's a you know nice little painting to put on the wall or give as a gift. You could do it on the front of a card, um, something like that, so I'm gonna show you how easy it is right now. Um, first, let's start off with a list of things you're going to need. First thing is a piece of watercolor paper. I do recommend the watercolor paper for this because it's thicker, helps the color move around. It's made for watercoloring. Um, I've got this prepped a little bit and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Next thing we're going to be using are um, these stamps. This is the Salt and Light stamp set that I have listed in my shop. It's growingmeadows.etsy.com and I'll put a link down below for you. Um, I'm going to show you how to use this stamp set and some permanent ink to add on with the text on the watercolor paper. We are going to be using this set of Tombow dual brush pens. This is the bright palette and I do love these things. They are um, they just blend together and work like watercolors. The colors are nice and bright. These are really fun. You guys are going to like these. And I'm going to use a really sort of non-traditional technique with them. And I'll show you that in a minute. Another thing we may or may not use is a drinking straw. Sometimes when the color is wet, I like to use this to blow the color, blow the wetness so the color spreads out a little bit. So sometimes I need to use this and sometimes I don't. It just depends on where the color decides to go. Um, you will need a permanent pen. I am using this one. It is from um, Illustrated Faith. It's currently available in the Genesis kit. Uh, and I think it's going to become available individually um, at, at some retailers right now. This is on the Bella Boulevard website in the Genesis kit. And I can put a link to that below as well. You're definitely going to need also some permanent ink. I'm using Stazon Jet Black Ink. This is a permanent ink so that when we add water, it is not going to smear around. You're going to need some water and a little spray bottle. I have this mister, but um, one with the hand that, oops, that you squeeze, that would work just as well too. But you're going to need something that sprays out water and a stack of paper towels. Um, also going to need an acrylic block, something to mount the stamps on. So let's go ahead and get started here and I'm going to show you how I get to work on this. Basically what I've done is I went ahead and wrote out the part of the verse that is not stamps. So you are the, and then the stamp says light of the world, so a city on a hill cannot be hidden. So I went ahead and did just the words and left space for the stamps and I'm going to go over those now with the permanent pen. The Illustrated Faith pen. I like this pen. Um, you can also use a Micron pens or whatever other permanent pen you have. I really like this pen because it dries super quick. So I do not have to hit it with a heat tool. Or for example, I know if I use a Micron pen with this technique, um, I do like to let it dry for a significant amount of time because although it is permanent, it seems to smear around a bit if I don't give it plenty of time to dry. So here I'm just uh, doing this in my own cursive handwriting. You could do this with, if you have any alpha stamps that you like, or um, I'm not sure. I know that the ink in my printer is not permanent. Um, it would smear if I sprayed it with water, so I'm not sure if that is an option if you have a permanent ink printer that you could use. So I'm just gonna go over the pencil. Sometimes I get fancy and make this calligraphy style and uh, thicken up some of the lines, but today I'm just going to go with the standard cursive print. And really the only reason I did this in pencil first was to make sure I had everything lined up the way I wanted it to look sort of centered in the page. So I didn't use a ruler or anything like that. I kind of just eyeballed it. Um, you could be more precise. But I kind of want this to look hand written and hand done. Oops, you know what? I just realized I left the H out of there, so I'm going to go ahead and squeeze him in like that. It's funny when you start hand lettering things, 
I really do know how to spell, but oftentimes I leave letters out because I'm just not thinking. Um, I like to use these erasers here. Uh, I don't know if this is just my preference, but a, a good eraser, definitely. You don't want like a pink a, on a regular yellow pencil or anything like that. It's going to just make a mess. But This paper is good. It's easy to erase. And I went real light with the pencil when I wrote this in pencil. So let's get rid of these pencil marks so we can get started with these stamps. Okay, so the first stamp we're going to use is the Light of the World stamp, and I'm just going to peel it off of its backing, and it clings to this acrylic block here, like this. Um, you can line it up. You can use the lines. This uh, acrylic block happens to have some lines on it to help you with lining it up, but you can see right through it, so that helps line it up on the page as well. I am, like I said before, using the Stays On Jet Black ink because it is permanent. It's kind of a little bit sticky, too, so... Just like to, and this is an older one. If you have a more juicy one, you wouldn't have to tap as much as I do. Those eraser marks. And I'm just gonna stick him right down here in line. Give him a good press down. There's that one. Next, I'm gonna peel off the City on a Hill stamp. Same thing, tap them on there. Like I said, if you have a newer ink pad, you wouldn't have to spend as much time loading it up. This one's just been used an awful lot. Let's go ahead and put that down on there, give it a press. And then last but not least, I'm gonna end on the page with the word um, shine, which is also on the same stamp set. I think that's what we're being called to do here. Um, you're, you're the light of the world. You're the city on the hill. Um, you know, you're the salt of the earth. And the Bible says these things because we've been given our own flavor, our own gifts and our own talents. And, uh, you know, God wants us to use them to glorify him. And that is kind of the meaning of life. Not to sound too cheesy there. But, um, you know, it, it is. It's... We're called to use our gifts, to discover our gifts and to use our gifts and that for God's glory and that equals the meaning of life. So now I'm going to go ahead and get out my markers. Um, this dries pretty quickly. I'm not too worried about it, especially because it's on the watercolor paper. It's kind of soaking into the thick paper now. Um, you could go ahead and hit it with a heat tool or give it some time to dry if uh, you're not as confident about that. So I'm going to start off with the bright green and the blue here, and I'm just going to color in. I'm going to show you guys how you don't have to be perfect with this technique at all. Just slap some color on there. I'm going to color the land in this green. It does not have to be perfect. It's going to go outside the edges anyway, and that's kind of what we want it to do. And then I'm going to do some blue around the edges for the water type look. Again, does not have to be perfect. This is, you can go any direction you want. It's all going to spread out when we uh, introduce some water. And I'm going to go throw in just a little bit of yellow here for light so it's lighter in the middle. Um, I'm going to just go down the whole page doing this similar technique here. Color in the windows with the yellow. Again, I am not being super perfect. The color is going to run everywhere, and that's the look I am going for. So I'm just going to go around the city in a purple. And I'm going to add in a little bit of orange just to help it glow so you can see the light. And then just because I like it, I'm going to add in a little bit of pink as well. Down here for shine, I'm going to do the similar technique. And I'm just going to, like I said, that, that ink is already soaked in. I'm not smearing it around at all. It is permanent. And you can see I didn't stop the film or anything like that. It's just 
kept on going. And then I am going to also add some pink here. And I think some of this orange color as well would be pretty. All right, now it looks a little crazy. It definitely doesn't look like artsy art. It looks more like something, um, you know, one of my little kids did. I'm going to show you how to fix that. I am going to get my paper towels ready so they're handy. I keep them here in a little stack. Um, and my spray bottle with water. And just, hang on, just a second. And now that I dropped it on the floor, this drinking straw, just in case I decide I need it. Okay. Now, it's crazy, but it's true. All I do is squirt the water right on the page and let the color run. And uh, you're gonna see a beautiful, almost instant watercolor effect. You can see how it starts to just spread out very beautifully. You can kind of squirt it in whichever direction you want it to go and coax it away from the text if that's what you're after. Um, now I do like to keep the paper towels handy for a couple of reasons. One, if this is too much color for you, it is very easy. I could plop this paper towel down right on top, give it a press, it would suck up almost all of the color. There would be hardly any left. It would be extremely light. Um, sometimes if I totally mess it up or I hate the way they ran together, I'll do that and wait for it to totally dry and then start over. Um, this I'm actually kind of liking, the way it's spreading apart here. It is a little wet in some areas, so like here I don't want it to spread any more than it already has, so I'm just going to take up some of that water with the paper towel. And you can you can blow on it with the straw as well. Um, that's what I was telling you earlier, if you blow on it you can kind of coax the color to spread out in a different direction. Like that, and it will help them run together a little bit if you want a little more of that. And if you go too far too, um, you can use the paper towel and dab up the ends and it's a little wet up here. Um, if you don't want the color to go any farther, you can also dab up, like down here there is some, you might not be able to see it, there's some water underneath where the purple is right here. So if I just soak up that water, then that color will not run any farther because there's no really water for it to run into. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here on the bottom. see if we can get it to spread out at all. There we go. And like I said, if that's farther than you want it to go, you can just um, very easily soak it up and the color will mostly, you know what I mean, go away. It's there, it's, but it's very light now. So that is really all you have to do. This is going to dry a little lighter than it is right now. It's not gonna be quite as saturated. Um, if you don't like your way your colors are muddied together here, take your paper towel, press it down, it's going to pull up a lot of the color as long as it's still wet. And uh, it would be very, very easy just to give it a little more color and give it a, another spray once it's dry. Um, when this dries, it is going to buckle the page some. And I'm just about to go a little farther. And uh, that's that's okay. It's just watercolor. And basically, if you, um, once it's totally dry, want to just stick it under some heavy books, leave it to flatten itself out. It will eventually do that, but what I like to do, which is kind of a weird technique, is to um, flip over a sheet tray, like a baking tray, and I will uh, put down a clean cloth, give the back of the paper a spritz with the water, flip it upside down on the cloth, and then I have a Teflon sheet, or you could even just use another clean, you know, piece of fabric or whatever put on top and iron it down on my highest setting. That will flatten it out and that is actually what I did with this one um, to give it to get it nice and flat. So uh, I hope you are inspired here to do some watercolor technique. This one's a little outside the box, you know, if you don't have a paint palette or if you have some of these fabulous markers that you want to use or any other water-based markers should work in a similar fashion. Um, you know, just some stamps and some permanent ink. We created a piece of art here in, I don't know, what, 10 minutes. And uh, if you want to get a hold of these stamps, I will put the link down below and also on my blog. Um, hop over there and check it out. Thank you.